We are live in the Make More Placements community for another episode of the Make More Placements podcast. Um, today, we're going to talk about three big differences between top performing recruitment and search personas and those who achieve mediocre results. Again, if you're um, tuning in live, just give us a right live in the comments, or if you're watching the replay, right replay in the comments, um, just to help with that, uh, you know, boost the algorithm, help it get seen more. And again, when you do that, what we'll send you is we'll send you a free cheap sheet on uh, growing your recruitment business. So just write live if you're watching live, replay if you're watching replay. Um, and if you're listening to the recording of this on either iTunes, Spotify, Spotify or wherever, remember to join the Make More Placements group. We go live every week on a different area of business growth, plan attraction for recruitment and search business owners. Um, but today, yeah, we're going to talk about three big differences between top performing recruitment and search business owners and those who achieve mediocre results. Terry, you, you came just to say hello, just to make sure you're safe. Yeah, uh, of course I am. Hello, good morning, good afternoon. Good evening, wherever you are, and welcome. Just to remind you that we're here every every Wednesday at fifteen hundred UK time. Um, our sole aim is to share with you how you can uh, how you can grow your business, how you can make more placements, how you can earn more money, how you can get higher fees or fewer headaches. So we do this every week. This is completely free. There's no cost. There's no obligation. But we just want to do all we can to help you grow your business. If you enjoy it, come and come and join us every week and, and share it with your friends and colleagues. Back to you, Drew. I think so. Yeah, real quick one for you today. So we want to, want to talk about three big differences between top performing recruitment and search business owners and those who achieve mediocre results. And again, just to be clear, these aren't the only differences. These are some of the, just some of the ones that we, um, you know, in a discussion that me and Terry were having recently, we, we've, you know, we've highlighted because, you know, between, between us or as a business, you know, we, we've worked with hundreds of recruitment and search business owners all over the world, um, you know, speak with them every day, speaking to thousands over the years. And you know, I think as a team, we get to see firsthand, um, you know, what's going on in their businesses, and and we've noticed a few differences between the way um, the most successful recruitment and search business owners think and behave and operate compared to those who achieve average average results. And what we found is, you know, a top performer can be in the you know same market, targeting the same clients, the same economy, and achieve drastically different results to everybody else because of a few subtle you know often subtle traits that they've got or they they do or the way they act that have big differences in their overall outcome or overall results is there anything you'd add to that no at this stage drew perfect so i'm just going to run through them very quickly um again these, this is not an exclusive list there's more catholic to list but these are three of the ones that we're seeing being um i guess more significant at this current point in time so the number one thing is that that we've noticed that all top performers um they have this belief that there's a there's a there's a they have a belief that there's a possibility to do significantly better than they're already doing, right? As they have a belief that it's a possibility to do significantly better than they're already doing. And again, that sounds obvious, but I think one of the things that I'd say is that wherever you are in your business and whatever uh, experience you've had, however long you've been operating, however well that you think you're doing, um, it's not that you're not doing well. Um, it's, it's it's just that with top performers. What, even, even when they're doing really well, they always seem to have this belief that they can do significantly better. Like it's almost, in a way, never good enough. They're never at, they never believe, even if, even if from the outside they look like that at the top of their game, have a successful business, they're performing better than everybody else. In their mind, they know and they believe that they could be doing significantly better. And because they have that belief, they're constantly seeking out ways to achieve that. They're, constantly, they're never sort of closed-minded. Again, some, some, sometimes we're speaking to recruitment and business owners who are doing okay and you talk to them about the business and, and they'll be saying they'll be, how, they'll be talking about how well they're doing how how great they're doing and it's not that they're not doing great I don't want to sort of be, like downplay what they've achieved or what they're achieving um, but it's just that you know again, again when you speak to lots someone could be doing 200,000 a year for example and think they're doing really well and someone in the same market could be doing 400,000 a year and not think they're doing well right so but with nice with top performers the ones who consistently achieve they always have this belief that, yeah, I'm doing well, but I could be doing significantly better. Is there anything you want to add to that? Yeah, it's, it's interesting, isn't it, Drew? Because we talk, we have we have the pleasure of talking to recruitment and search uh, managers from around the world every day of the week, and I think I think it's I think it's fair to say the the initial conversation with these owners is, is, is quite revealing. So we sometimes talk to owners and they say, "Do you know, Terry, I'm doing exceptionally well. I'm doing a, my figures are my sorry, my business is a six figure business." 
um, and we're doing really well. I don't think there's anything that you, you can share with that, that, could, that could significantly improve the business. Let me get another call or email from someone else that's doing, that's doing seven figures a year. And then they'll reach out to me saying, look, we're doing seven figures of the, a year at the moment, but we, we want to really double that over the next 12 months. I wonder if we can have a conversation about how we can do that. Two recruitment or search firm owners, completely different attitude. One saying, this is, this is as good as it gets. And another one saying, I'm doing really well, but I want to do even better. <clears throat> and that in itself, there's a great book on this. I uh, can't remember the author's name. The book's called Growth Mindset. And people that have what's called a, a, a growth mindset uh, accept the possibility that they can do even better. And those with what's called a closed mindset, they argue for what we call the limitations. They argue that this is as good as it gets. You know, um, uh, my clients won't pay anymore. My clients won't pay me a retainer. Yeah, but my market's really competitive and this is as good as it gets. We, we, can't, we can't grow anymore. And it's worth considering the implications of, of that kind of thinking. Because if you've got that, that closed mindset, that fixed mindset, this is as good as it gets, guess what? But if you've got that mindset, that, that growth mindset, actually, we're doing okay now, but there's, there's always room for improvement. Well, I'm sure you can appreciate what's going to happen to those kind of, kind of businesses. But until you, believe, uh, until you believe in better results, you won't strive towards them. It really is as simple as that. And that's manifested for us when we're talking to recruitment and search for owners, which we do every day of the week. We're having, I'm probably having half a dozen conversations a day, every single day with recruitment and search for owners around the world. And just that early, those early few words, I think you'd agree with me, Drew, it's quite revealing about the thinking of that particular individual. Yeah, 100%. And I think, you know, this isn't exclusive to recruitment. You see it in no. every top performer. You, you know, you speak to them, you, you listen to them talk, you read their biographies or watch a documentary on them. They am um, thinking Michael Jordan, Ronaldo, like top, top performers in any field. There's always this underlying belief for them that, you know, as good as they are, as good as they might be, they always think, you know, they can do more. They're almost overcritical of themselves, which can, it could be sort of a gift and a curse. It's definitely, it's definitely a bad side of that where I think sometimes you forget to celebrate those successes. So there's definitely a downside to that. But I think what it does in the, in the positive, it, it keeps them pushing. It keeps them staying, you know, training longer, pushing harder, you know, always wanting to strive and do more because they're constantly comparing what they're, themselves, their current, their, their current level of achievement to what it, what it could be. They're always looking at themselves and think, you know, where can I improve? Where can I do better than I'm already doing? And I think that's one of the big sort of differences I see with some of the top performers. Yeah, and just you just remind me of something, actually. I do remember the story that I won't I won't mention the club. Yeah, you know, the football the professional football who joined a professional football club in the UK, um, and his manager when he joined, he, he came from overseas, and his manager said, "Look, you're slightly overweight, so what we want you to do is to do some additional training. You're just a little bit overweight, nothing serious, but we want to do some additional training just to lose lose a couple of pounds, a couple of kilos." And this professional footballer refused to do it, saying, "Are you kidding me?" I'm, you know, I'm one of the top footballers in the world. I don't need to do that. Need to say that football didn't last at the club. But I thought what was also more interesting, though, is that the fans turned against him because the fans' attitude was, how dare you say that this is as good as it gets? How dare you say that you don't want to train anymore? And you want to think about that. How often do you say that? This is as good as it gets. I don't want to train anymore. That there is no more room for improvement. Um, yeah, you just reminded me of that when you, when you were sharing that story, Drew. Yeah. So believe in the possibility of doing significantly better than, than you are now. So that's number one. Number two is they're always open to a better way. So they're, always, they're always open to a better way of doing things, which is kind of linked to the first one. Right. And again, this is, these are some of the traits that we see in some of our be, like, best performing clients as well. Is that, again, if you're running a business at the moment, you know, what you're doing is successful to an extent right you can you've got as long as you've got you know clients and you've got you love to find 85 kind of actually making placements you have a you know established business the whatever process you're using whatever systems you have in place work right they, 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 they definitely work and i guess the more successful you get i guess the more belief that you have and, and, and they work but with top performers though they have a process that works right they're, they're always open to a better way of doing things whether it's a better way of doing marketing better way of doing sales better way of doing delivery they're not so arrogant to think that just because the way they've been doing it has been working for 10, 20, you know, however many years, 
that there's not any way to improve it. Even if, even if the new way is completely, you know, almost completely off the scale, different to what they're currently doing, but they're always open to it. Um, and open to it. Again, it's, it's amazing. The calls that we have, it's always the most successful recruiters that are more open-minded. Right? It's, it, and you, you think it would be the opposite. You'd think it would be the ones who, uh, or, or, or I, I would have thought it would be the ones who were extremely successful, um, built multiple successful businesses who would be more arrogant about it and more, you know, less likely to listen to what you have to say or less likely to, I guess, take on board your viewpoint. But it's, it's completely the opposite. The, the more successful someone is, I found the more open they are to listen to where it could be a better way. And again, it's not necessarily that they'll always agree or always um, always know it is a better way, but they're at least open to listening, right? Sometimes with uh, with mediocre recruiters, mediocre recruit, recruitment businesses, they're so obsessed with their way of doing things, they're not even open to a better way of doing it. Terry, anything you want to add to that? Yeah, the, yeah, the amount of phone calls we've had when the recruiter would say, I've been doing this for 10 years, uh, what can you teach me? And you, you really want to think about that statement. I get that you could have been for 10 years, you may even be doing it for 20 years, but if you've been doing it uh, for the last 20 years, your way, which isn't the best way, probably isn't the right sort of experience that you want. And then we get those other guys. And one of the questions we always, we always ask is, what prompted you to book this call with us? And they always say something like this. I've been doing this for 10 years. I acknowledge that I don't know it all. I thought it'd be worthwhile having the conversation with you guys to see what else uh, I, I could learn. Terry, you there? I'm not sure if my internet's gone or yours. Well, I think it's I think it's yours. So uh, yeah, just to finish off what Terry's saying. Um, yeah, what we found with the top performers, they're always open to a always open to a better way. I think going back to what Terry's saying about experience, it's, it's 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 often one of the things that the more yeah it's often one of the things that I, I find business owners lean on you know i've got 10 years experience 20 years experience well however, however many years experience it, it is we always lean on it as the the reason why we know it all or that there's no better way to improve again i've found with the more successful someone is they're not bothered about what their experience is they're not they don't care how long they've been doing it because they, they they've seen the market shift and change right what good was your experience during COVID, for example, what good was your experience, your 20s experience when the market's different to how it's ever been? Things evolve, markets evolve, you know, technology evolves, right? What good was your experience that you had before social media, for example? It, it, again, I'm not saying it's not it's not useful or not, not relevant, but the more technology progresses, the more the market progresses, shifts, the less it, the less relevant your experience is. So it's all, it's, they're always willing to stay on top of the game. So number one, we've got you know, belief in the possibility in doing better. Number two, they're always open to a better way. And number three, and again, these are all linked, is that they're prepared to implement and test. So they're prepared to implement and test. So these three things combined all work in conjunction because we've got, um, if we look at someone who's getting media open results, what often happen is, happens is they're doing well and they, you know, they're comfortable in that place doing well, whatever the number is. They don't believe necessarily they can they can do significantly better, right? They think they're at the top of their game. Number two, they 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 don't think there's a better way of doing things, right? And number three, even if they they've seen a better way, they're not prepared to implement and test, right? Top performers are the exact opposite. One, they believe in a better way, as we discussed. Two, they they're open to sorry, they, they believe in the possibility of doing better. Number one, two, they're always open to a better way, and three, they're always prepared to implement and test. So again, an example of this might be that you might hear or see um, someone talk about a different way to find candidates or win clients or run a sales presentation or run a team, right? That's completely different to the way you've been taught or the way you've been, you know, you've believed to be the correct way for all these years. And what I find with top performers, instead of sort of being arrogant or having an ego, so they think that, well, you know, I've been doing it 10 years, that way can't be better than what I'm doing. They might question the method. They might question the idea, whether it's marketing, sales, whatever. They might question it. But what they'll say is actually, okay, we'll test it for one month and then we'll measure the results, right? So they're prepared to implement and test. And again, this is something I've noticed with, um, you know, our best clients and people outside of our network. They have these three traits that they, they're doing like relentlessly. So I guess for you, for your business, one message we want you to go away with is 
you know, are you open to the possibility that you can do significantly better than you're currently doing? Are you open to a different or better way of doing things to what you're currently doing? And are you prepared to test and implement? Again, if you are, um, if you go to makemoreplacements.com forward slash call, makemoreplacements.com forward slash call and book a call with us, there's a few things that we're doing right now in the market that are getting um, all of our clients, um, enable them to book between 40 to 50 sales meetings with interest time managers per month, help them convert those sales meetings at the right fee and the right times as well. Um, that's, you know, might be different to the way you're doing, doing things, right? But if you're willing to be open-minded enough to test it, see how it works, um, we'll be happy to talk to you. So let's go to makemoreplacements.com forward slash call and we'll speak with you soon. Again, apologies for Terry's um, internet going down. I think it looks like it's had a power cut. Um, but yeah, we'll be back next week. Until then, take care, take action and be relentless.